Thank you, Technical, for the footage. It's been a little over a week since Cybernetic Crescent released, a bold addition to the Extreme Demon trilogy published by Viperin that loosely follows a technologic theme. During the time span of the 2.1 update, Mega Collab standards have been exponentially rising as creators find new ways to improve designs and details, and new names step up to the plate. The community has come to expect that new Mega Collabs, especially those with stacked rosters such as the levels in this series, should have a tight colour scheme and theme followed by every participant, which does make for a very memorable experience, but doesn't provide much to chew on. The fact that Artificial Ascent and Digital Descent were made in a completely different era leads to their format being entirely different than what you might expect from a heavy duty project in construction for over a year. The team of creators behind Cybernetic Crescent have followed the same approach that their predecessors took inevitably resulting in clear flaws in cohesion and theme that the community has come to realise as creators are a lot more critical these days. In other words, the team has bravely thrown a curveball into the mix of bland and repetitive design levels and it's evidently very polarising. You either love the level or you hate it, but it's undeniable that this level succeeds as a community spectacle, following in the footsteps of the previous levels in the series as they're both still prevalent in the community and that's for a reason. Unlike many other mega collabs released recently, Cybernetic Crescent stays afloat by having a strong mix of familiarity, originality and talking points. Familiarity is the key to success in making a sequel. Many of the creators in the original levels were invited to this level, all with recognisable styles, which are very interesting to delve into since it's clear to see their stylistic progression after multiple years. To mention some of the parts that feel the most familiar, Codex introduces the level once again, living up to the community expectations with an enhanced and cleaner style than his previous work in the series, which fits in with the smooth feel of the song in the opening. Nazgub's part instantly stands out, as it's a lot sleeker and denser than his other works, with amazing attention to detail in the blocks, which can be deciphered to find hidden messages. This part is cleverly placed in the build-up, exactly how we starred in the previous levels. Vlack and Devon are both solid parts, running back to back and using a lot of black in their designs, stringing their parts together seamlessly. Devon's part is a major talking point of this level as it's vast, flashy and confusing, but reportedly the most fun, while Vlack has tight and satisfying gameplay with his classic decoration style that's been compared to Heinz a lot in the past, but feels different enough and in place here. Heinz and Teron round off the level strongly with their recognisable colour and structuring. Heinz uses a lot of black around the edges, with intensely timed gameplay and open feeling between the square structures, then Teron rounds off the level on a majestic note, with eye-catching shapes and incredible line art that separates the blocks from the background. Cybernetic Crescent takes a different approach than other mega collabs in the way that it flows. The level seems to be bunched up in a way that allows a few creators to mesh their style and make fitting transitions from one part to the next. For example, how I was able to complement both Vlack and Devon, or Heinz and Teron at the same time, since they work so well together. The more original and outlandish parts of the level slot right in between these clusters, bringing a regularity to an otherwise regular level. Sapunja's part, for example, serves as a nice break from the streak of design parts by implementing a lot more glow, which ends the drop on a climactic note and elegantly passes on to Heinz with a slick white screen flash. Originality like this isn't always presented in a design-heavy level, which is subjective, but personally I find joy in the switch that this level has to offer. I find this level to be unique in the way that it rejects the current day consistency standards even by how it's paced. It's not very often that a level of this calibre experiments with such prolonged buffer in the beginning that allows the song to fully quieten down, which is where we see Galvatron's originality shine. A few parts in this level have insane depth, but I feel like the layering in Galvatron's part is by far trippier than any other, alongside the fluid transition out of Furtifunky. This is the most abstract part in the level as it disregards the need for design as you fade into darkness, allowing Nazgub and Viperin's parts to masterfully ease you back into the level before you're smacked in the face with Samifying's energy at the drop. I find the level incredibly satisfying to watch as it conveys many different emotions as you progress further. Cybernetic Crescent manages to make me feel something, in a creating age where many levels mesh by pushing designs for the whole duration. It just has so much to offer, which admittedly isn't for everyone, but it definitely serves its purpose within the series, since Artificial Ascent and Digital Descent both had such a captivating aura. I've mentioned a few of the level's talking points already. 
It's important for a level of this scale to have areas to explore and catch the community's attention, otherwise the level will become obsolete. To give an example, there are four individual secret paths hidden in the level that increase the difficulty and show different badges on the end screen. Aside from the lack of cohesion, another main talking point with Cybernetic Crescent is the fact that Samifying's drop section looks and plays like a cut from Sedulous, his latest release with very similar designs and colours. Personally, I think his part slides right into the level after Viperin's build-up cuts off, leaving a blank canvas. It's a major step up from his part in Digital Descend, and also shares the same flowy gameplay, so it works for me as part of the series. Another talking point is the song choice, which has a different feel to the other fast-paced songs in the series, and was honestly a risk to use, but it paid off in my eyes, for reasons such as pacing that I mentioned earlier, and also in the mix of satisfying gameplay and fast-paced gameplay that the level offers. A lot of top players have spoken on the gameplay and balancing, claimed by Technical to be fully balanced and around top 60 on the demon list, although many victors disagree and believe it should be placed around 35. The balancing seems welcoming at first, but the difficulty swiftly ramps up in the finicky ship gameplay before the drop, which can lead you on to long attempts to no avail, since the first few parts are much easier than the rest of the level. It's received massive criticism in this department from skilled players, alongside their reluctance to learn Devon's part amidst a very skill-based level. Overall, from a visual standpoint, I think the level is outstanding, and has some of the best cuts I've seen in recent times. Although some areas of the level are quite contradictory, both in quality and difficulty, I think it makes for a pleasant viewing experience nonetheless, especially the end screen made by Zal Esper and Furs, which is extremely smooth and closes the level nicely as the song fades out. Upon release, this level unintentionally caused a negative stir, as a few statements from Viperin were misinterpreted and taken out of context, as if the team were using the experimental excuse, which isn't the case. It's clear to see that a few parts of the level are more outlandish than even the oddballs in the previous levels, but I don't believe that was the goal at all, as Viperin has been quite flexible as a host as to what hits and misses. This portion of the level is definitely my favourite, as it's tastefully decorated and effectively layered to make it feel like you're running through a computer system. The unconventional moving block gimmick in Nazgub's part looks to be awkward to learn but satisfying to pull off in the long run, in unison with the other minute ship movements that you need to fit through the gaps. This shade of green is great, and the colour depth is built very nicely in the background with stacked glow and wavy lines that fit well together. I agree, this part is remotely static in the foreground, but I think the background fills the void and makes up for it. The song at this part also feels very powerful, just coming out of a relaxed phase, which is a bit like the calm before the storm in this level as it only gets more difficult from this part onwards. Cybernetic Crescent embraces tradition over modernity, which makes it stand out in the extreme demon mega collab field. Let me know what you think of the level in the comments section, leave a like and subscribe, thank you for watching, and have a good day!